I hope you stop by to talk about penny stocks, because that's all I'm going to do. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Tuesday, February 13th. Now, all I really do on this show is share my personal opinion, my due diligence on a hot penny stock. A stock that's under five bucks that you can find on any market that has potential to make us money. Now, how do I determine a hot penny stock? Well, actually, I look for two things right off the bat. First and foremost, a hot chart. I want a chart that has heat, whether that be volume coming in, a breakout setup, or something going to the moon. I want to see a chart that shows like it's ready to run. When I find a chart that has heat, then I'll invest the time to rummage through all the filings and the press releases looking for a catalyst. I'm not going to just look at today's news or this week's. I will go all the way back a month. Even a stale catalyst can get a hot chart moving. Now, once you find a hot piece of news to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And I've got one for you right now. This is HKIT, H-K-I-T, High Tech Global Inc. This company's got a lot going for it. And I wish I'd have shared it with you a week ago, but... Who knew? <laughs> On February 7th and 8th, this stock took off. She ran from 68 cents to over $7.50. It was well over a thousand percent run. But here's the kicker. There was no new news or fresh filings on the 7th or the 8th or even the days before. She ran over a thousand percent for no catalyst, no reason, nothing I could find, not even on Google. But today... <laughs> She had a huge piece of news come out. There was a change of control. Somebody stepped in and bought 56% of the company. But that was today, not last week. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Now, I see a lot of other good things in this company. She's ticking a lot of boxes. She has a low float. We've got strong volume today. We have positive stockholder equity. And the chart has a lot of potential for gains. So HKIT finished the day at $2.32, currently at about 11.5% gains. She is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, my favorite penny stocks to trade, honestly. First off, I hate paying transaction fees. Why do we have to pay down at the OTC and not on the major exchanges? And two, not to be overlooked, the major exchanges are just safer than the OTC there's a lot of rules these companies have to obey, and there's a lot of people watching them to make sure they obey them. We don't get that sort of oversight on the OTC. So I really do like penny stocks on the major exchange. So what is high tech about? Well, first, let's get this out front. It's a Chinese company working in China. Some people don't like that, and I get that. We've got tense relations, America and China. And then China's got its own problems. So at any point, something could change and this stock could just disappear. I get that. On the other hand, being a Chinese company working in China means you're probably going to be doing big business because China's a big country with a huge population. And that's what most of us think about when we think about these Chinese companies. So what is High Tech Global about? Well, they tell us here that they provide information technology consulting and solutions to small and medium businesses in various industry sectors in China. Now, I found this interesting and confusing. They offer anti-counterfeiting tax control system tax devices, including golden tax disks and printers along with tax services and IT services. They sell the software and the hardware to large businesses, including laptops and printers, desktop computers, and related accessories, as well as internet servers, cameras, and monitors. I don't know what anti-counterfeiting tax control system is, but if it means you're cheating the government out of your taxes, I'm sure this is going to be huge over in China. It'd probably be huge over here too. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Nice jump, right? We got about four times the normal volume, 400% increase, going from 3.1 million up to 12.7 million. Share structure for HKIT isn't bad. Our outstanding share count is just hovering over the low float zone. We are at 11 million. Low floats, people normally constitute 10 million the start of a low float. Well, we know our float, even though it's not listed here, isn't going to be any higher than 11 million. 
So let's just call it a low float. Market cap for the company, we are just about 23 million. Financials for high tech. Looks like they've been steady. She's been uh, between six and seven million for the most part, and she's bringing home over 50% of that in profit. Quarterlies, nope, we're not gonna get them with this NASDAQ stock. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But they all give us a balance sheet. So let's see what they've got in the bank. They got about 1.2 million in the bank. Total assets right there, 21 million. Total liabilities, one third. 7.6 million, so we do have positive stockholder equity of 13.5 million in this company. There is value in this stock. We're not holding a bag. Taking a look at those disclosures. All right, this is the big news, folks. We have an SC13G here. Now, this 6K and this 6K really aren't big news at all, but the 13G is always good news because this is a new owner coming on board. Whenever you see one, someone has bought enough shares to own a percentage of the company and probably has voting rights. In this case, they have got the majority. Let's see here. Not that one. That was the wrong one. This is the right one. So what we've got here is Fortune Enterprise Holdings. They have just purchased 8.1 million shares and own almost 57% of the company. Now, I don't know anything about the investor. I don't know if they plan on changing operations. I have no clue. All I know is this is big news. I know the chart took off a week ago without any news. Let me show you this. Now, first, while we're here, I told you to check out February 8th and February 7th. Well, here is February. There's nothing there. We've got something on the 9th which wasn't even important. I think it was about a shareholder meeting and I did dive into that. There was no mention of a reverse split or anything like that. And I think this too is about a shareholder meeting. But my point is there's nothing there on the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, nothing. And looking at the news, dun, 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 dun. All of this is seeking alpha. The only piece of news we have here is back in November. So there is no news. There is one filing that came out today. The stock ran over 1,000% a week ago. She has kept about 400% of that and looks like she's ready to continue running. And there's a lot of potential on this chart. Let me share it with you. It's a wild chart, folks, but it's a yummy chart too. This is HKIT, High Tech Global, and we're going to chart it on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. Now, of course, I've got it open to a six-month, four-hour view, and we've got a delicious high bubble on that screen. Back in August, we hit a high of $51. That is a legitimate high. There is no reverse split here. The chart has not been adjusted. Now, it was short-lived. It didn't stay up there very long, but it did hang around the low to mid-30s for quite a while. As a matter of fact, on September 5th, she abandoned that position. She dropped hard, and I looked around for a reason. I looked through her filings, her press releases. I went to Google and did a search. There had to be a reason for this. No, there wasn't. Just like this bounce over here where it went from $0.68 cents to over $7.50. No reason. This stock just keeps doing things without cause, and it dropped severely from $32 down to 4 bucks. and I can't explain why. And that was her floor, folks. You can see she has just been laying there. Even when the 200 came to her, she made no attempt to jump. And here she jumps without cause. Now, before we focus in on current activities here, I want to grab my Fibonacci and draw my lines. Always do it, big drops or big pops. You go from one end, poke it, and poke the other end. Bink, there you go. So this shows me algorithmic supports and resistances. Now, these aren't connected to any historical price points, but they're valid nonetheless. I can trade on them. The price is going to respect them. Now, let's zoom in on the current times here. So, there it is on February 7th and 8th. She started the day running. Actually, started the day, the day before, the 6th. You can see she was pushing up. On the 7th, she jumped up to about 250, kept climbing aftermarket, pre-market, 
and hit a high of $7.77. Nice number. Then came crashing back down through the nine day, down to the 20, dipping underneath it. And now she's back on top of her nine. Looks like she could actually be just trying to get on top of the 20 right now. All of our SMAs are over the 200 and they are all pushing up right now. Volume has just been coming into the picture since that run. We had nothing to talk about before. Our oscillators, they were real strong. They did cool off, but everything shows recovery right now. You can see every single one of them is getting ready to start pushing up, except our RSI. It has had a little bit of dip and has just gone under 55. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Flat, down here at 54, underneath the 200. Came above the 200. It looks like it may have been on the 6th when she started pushing. Had that giant rip hitting that high, 775. Coming down, did not come all the way down to the 200. I like that. That's a token sign of some strength in the price. Curved around on her own volition. Got up on top of the 20. Broke our first support here, which is at $2.90 roughly. Came back down. It looks like she's sitting on our 20-day SMA right now. Our SMAs here are a bit boggled up. They're not in the right place. Our oscillators, they're a little weak. They do show that they want to go up, but they've cooled off a little bit as well. Hmm. <laughs> Did that make any sense? Taking a look at our five-day, five-minute. All right, so there's our big run. I am going to grab my Fibonacci again. I'm going to start right down here at that low bubble and go to that high bubble. Bink. Let's see where we're sitting right now. Now, I am looking for this point right here. Matter of fact, I'm going to grab that particular point because that is my favorite point is the center. All right. Now, I'm going to get rid of my Fibonacci, and that should just leave me with my, where are you? There you go. My center line right there. So that is the center of this surge, halfway up, halfway down. So when she came down, she broke that 50% mark, came down to the other FIB markings, the low support, came underneath that, and right now she is sitting on top of her 200. Looks like she's ready to climb, but she needs to get on top of this support, and ultimately she needs to get on top of this. Once she gets on top of 415, I think we're going to see a big boost of strength here. HKIT, it is a hard stock to predict, but she has these huge jumps. She is doing it without catalysts. We've just had huge news of a change of control, 56% of the company. I would expect a follow-up news press. Honestly, what are the intentions? Did they just make an investment or do they have plans to change operations and do something else? I don't know, but I think HKIT is worth putting on your watch list. Volume comes in, you could see this thing rip hard, maybe close to $32. I know that's wild, but that's why I like the chart. The possibility exists. I haven't covered everything with this company, folks. There's a lot of information. Do your own due diligence before you invest. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow.